On the outskirts of Portland, Maine, the Academy is home to MMA pioneer Jay Jack and his team of fighters as they prepare for a busy night on September 23rd. The fight that stands out is Sean Durfee versus John Johnston, a highly anticipated heavyweight bout that neither fighter is taking lightly. I just know it's going to be a hard fight, man. Two big guys, it's always, we're always slugging. You know, it's, it's going to be an awesome fight. I do see myself taking the back and rear naked choke, you know. I mean, my past two fights, that's how I finish, you know, jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Sean Durfee, 6'2", 255, a big, big guy, 32 years old. Uh, he's, he has the age in his side in this fight. He's a big guy, but he's a ground guy. And that's the, that's the interesting thing. There's not a lot of big, big, really good ground guys. And uh, that's what you have here at GFL 13 at Sean Durfee. If the elbow's sticking above, then you've got good pressure. If you go like this and you don't see the elbow, then he's gonna rip his elbow to the floor and you're gonna lose the position. So just make sure that elbow's up. If the elbow's not up, just settle back into to north-south and, and wait for something good. Being involved in the early stages of MMA, Jay Jack is very familiar with no holes barred nice. lifestyle of previous years. Oh, Valley Tudo is awesome, man. <laughs> no rules, no gloves, no time limit, no weight class. That's the way it ought to be. Like, the day they told me I had to put gloves on and stop headbutting, I almost cried. I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing it. In a warehouse in Wyoming somewhere, like a bad rave. <laughs> There's no commission and dude, no signs. Dude's like waving you in. It's ridiculous, but it was, it was fun, man. That was my that was my life for a while. I mean, dude, back in the day, I was fighting, and uh, there's like, you can't even tell the chick at the store who's asking why you're buying all the Gatorade what you're about to go do, because nobody fucking knows. You're like, I'm gonna go cage fight. They don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like back then, you couldn't. It, we didn't even like. For example, when we first moved to town. We, we were slick and named the school the Academy of Mixed Martial Arts, but it's not because the name Mixed Martial Arts literally hadn't even been decided on yet. Like, there was still talk on the underground forum about what are we going to call this sport? NHB, MMA, you know, it was, I, it was like this double entendre. Like, I thought if I put mixed martial arts on the wall, like, the general dudes on the street will get the impression that it's a freestyle martial arts kind of, you know, mixed, eclectic place. But dudes that know will drive by and screech to a halt and go, what the fuck is that? Wait, like, really? Like, wait a minute, dude. Are you talking about the real shit or are you talking about something else? And that's what happened, you know? Like, Mike Brown. Brown, for example, would see it and be like, whoa, re like mixed, mixed, mixed martial arts? And I'd be like, yeah, dude, mixed, yeah, we fight, you know? It was awesome, sweet. But at the time, it was like an inside joke. Nobody knew what the fuck it meant, you know? So no, I mean, like, what the UFC's turned into now, who would have seen it, you know? Dana White's the only one that fucking saw that coming, you know? So what are you gonna do? But, but yeah, it's huge, it's ridiculous. I mean, I had no idea what it was gonna, I had no idea what it was gonna turn into, man. The heart rate is going to be similar to what we're going to feel on the cage. You know, super high heart rate, stressful, different exercises, and they're always changing. I've played tons of sports, football, rugby, you know, baseball, basketball. There's no other sport that you do physical and mental preparation, like MMA, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Definitely the workouts aren't easy. Every day is a challenge. Um, and I push myself because I see myself getting better from match to match, fight to fight, tournament to tournament, from day to day. Even though the Academy has exceptional talent, one thing that stands out above the rest is its team camaraderie. But you heard every fucking person in the room at some point look at somebody else and go, Come on, Kelly, you can make it. Come on, Durf, you got one more rep and shit like that. And it's not manufactured. It's not like I say, if you don't say it once around, you're gonna get in trouble, I'm gonna give you a demerit or something. That's just the culture of the room, you know? Everybody cares about how hard everybody else is working and like, are you, are you still in it? You know, you can do it and show support, you know? 
And that's pretty rare, man, because you've got no breath. It's hard to say fucking anything when you're doing that workout. And if they have to sacrifice two extra breaths, because, man, when you're dying, you're, you don't want to turn around and go, let's go, Kelly. Like, that's not what you want to do with your fucking lungs right then. You want to just hyperventilate and puke, you know? But the fact that they can take two breaths that they should have sucked in and say something to somebody else to give them some support is fucking rad, you know? That's, that's, that's awesome, you know? So the people that, that don't have that vibe pull away from the, the momentum of the room and they don't make it that way, you know? Think about, think, think about the game plan, Durf. Think about the game plan you're developing. Like, just because you see an opportunity to go to the bottom and work something, don't. Because today is more mental than physical, you know? Like, today is building the game plan, not the capacity. Let that bastard get on top of you, boy. <laughs> you're in deep shit. He's, uh, he's good at jiu-jitsu, man. He's good at jiu-jitsu and he's fucking strong. This, this bastard will call me at like 11 at night to ask me about elbow positioning on a move. <laughs> and, and that's awesome. Like that kind of like wanting it bad. Like that's awesome. And that's how, that's how come he's as good as he is. And that's also why he will get as good as he's going to get, you know. With Durfee's third fight fast approaching, what he may lack in pure talent, he makes up for with pure dedication, admiration, and passion for a sport that has given him so much. Durfee is a really good teacher, and one of the reasons that he's a really good teacher is because he cares so much about what he's doing. Because, like I said about this place trying to change people's lives, this place for Durfee just changed the course of his life forever, you know what I mean? Like it changed him as a person, like everything about him. Uh, and he sees the ability to do that for other kids, and it just is inspirational to him. Like, fighting is important to him and whatever, but man, like, that is like having a bunch of adopted kids for him. Like, that is probably the most important thing in the entire world to him, short of raising his own child, you know? Uh, and when somebody cares that much about their students, they can't not be a good teacher, you know? Uh, again, it doesn't hurt that he learned how to teach. For me, I'm a good instructor. He's got good technique. He gets good curriculums, you know? I give him help and pointers as to how to develop into a better teacher. But really, that's only so much of it, you know? Because I, I could put my best effort into somebody, and if they didn't love those kids and, 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 and care to the level that he does about how it's affecting their lives, it wouldn't come through. It wouldn't matter, you know? He returns the favor by dedicating his time and knowledge to the younger generation by teaching, especially with one student who just so happens to be his son. What does your daddy teach? <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty, uh, pretty incredible to see my son out on that mat. You know, it's uh, him having this at his age, man. Uh, uh, is, is amazing. Uh, I wish I had it when I was four. <laughs> I know it's super cliche doing it for the kids, but man, I'll tell you what, I can't get uh, any more excited than teaching a kid's class. Just the change that I've seen in my personal life uh, when I first started this, going from what I was when I was 20 years old, 21 years old, to now, um, has really inspired me to pass the jiu-jitsu along. Uh, it's completely changed my life. And all I have to do, I mean, I thank Jay and Mandy every day, <laughs> probably more than, more than, you know, more than they care to hear. But uh, it's really changed my life, and all I can do is hope to pass that on. One, two, three. Let's go! Hey, John, John Durfee John. is a ground fighter. He's a true ground fighter, coming out of Jay Jack School. Obviously, his two fights, both wins by submission. This is an area where um, John would be the weakest. He's not a he's not a great ground guy. We we've only seen him in one fight. He just made his pro debut recently, went in stellar fashion, but by striking, he never had an interest of going to the ground. So if Sean gets him down on the ground, it's going to be a an interesting uh, interesting war, and uh, it could be could be a good night for Sean. Uh, me and John Johnson are uh, going to step in the ring and have some good times. I feel awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to the fight with John. It's going to be a lot of fun. In a basement on the outskirts of Boston, Somerville, Massachusetts plays home to an elite fight team known as Sidiotong Muay Thai Academy. Its leader, Mark Delagrati, develops and trains some of the best fighters in the game. Mark's right-hand man just happens to be Sean Durfee's next opponent, John Johnson. Obviously, as you can see, it's not your global gym. 
you know, but it's it's a family. You know, when we train, everybody comes in here, we train hard, um, and the atmosphere is, is, is real strong, real confident, real family-like, you know, where we know when we're doing our training that we're getting the best that we possibly can. At Team City Otong in Somerville, John has worked with a who's who of, of famed MMA fighters. Everyone from Marcus Davis to Kenny Florian to Pete Spratt, uh, yeah, Stefan Bonner or uh, George Gargel or everyone. So he has continually worked over these years with a long list of fighters that are making their living in pro MMA fighting. And he's had this experience on a daily basis. So he's a 1-0 MMA fighter himself. He has been fighting these guys for a whole lot of years, and he's bringing that skill, that high-level skill, to GFL 13. John Johnson, uh, as a student and as a friend and as a member of my team and part of my staff and a part of my extended family, is a hard worker, dedicated, puts everything he has into everything he does, and uh, it, it pays off. It, it shows in everything he does. John's heart is huge. He will not quit. That's one of the things that's him about, about him uh, is that he's uh, he's stubborn and uh, you know he he just he won't lay down for anybody. And again, Again, that comes from his upbringing. That comes from from the the path that he took growing up. You know, he, you know, not to get too much into John's past, but you know, we all grew, kind of grew up in the same area, and we didn't grow up with the nicest kids. And most of John's friends are now dead or in jail. So John has seen both sides of the fence. And uh, that was one thing that I had to do with John is I had to harness the good side, so to say. You know, not the dark side, not the bad side. You know, but uh, you know, John needed to take that aggression, needed to take that street knowledge, needed to take that intensity, and he needed to channel it into the right direction. And I think in, in the fight game, uh, it's oftentimes that you find troubled kids or troubled teens or people that come off the streets, and this is not necessarily John, but people that, that have different paths that they've taken, but all, all roads lead to one, and that's uh, you know enlightenment, so to say. And I think John uh, came into this gym uh, as a, a tough guy and as a, a troublemaker, and uh, I think he truly found himself in martial arts, and now he's a completely different person. I think that the martial arts have provided a new lifestyle for John, and now John is on the path of giving back to what the arts have given him. I used to fight Muay Thai, uh, and then I retired for about two and a half years, and I wanted to get back into the into it, but I wanted to get into the cage. Probably a year of begging Mark, Crew Mark, to give me his blessing to do it because he wanted me to kind of stay as a trainer. Um, but then he finally gave in and gave me his blessing to go ahead and get in the cage. Longtime friend and younger by many years, Tyson Chartier is John's manager. He is also John's student, which makes an interesting relationship. But above all, Tyson knows the gym as well as anyone and knows what it takes in order for John to win. Managing a fight is tough because you got to understand uh, their personalities, what makes them tick, what motivates them, what demotivates them, what gives them anxiety. Um, you got to know like when they're tired, uh, what they're training, who they're fighting, and how they're supposed to be training. Uh, you know, focusing on their weight. You know, John's a heavyweight, so it's not as big of an issue. But uh, making sure his cardio is good—that's a big issue with a lot of heavyweights. But managing a fight overall, I mean, it, it's definitely tough. It looks easy. Everybody's like, oh, you do nothing. You just set up matchups and get, you know, 10% or whatever. But it's definitely a lot of work that goes into it. And, you know, John could be high maintenance at times, but it's just because we're friends, I think. I don't care if this guy, obviously this guy's probably going to try to take John down and, and beat him. He take him down, beat on him. John's not going to tap. John's not going to give up. John's going to keep coming. He's going to keep listening. He's going to keep fighting hard. And, you know, there's no quit in John. So this guy, you know, he better be in shape to... You know, if he wants to be lay on top of John for three rounds, he's going to have to be in shape to do it. So We're talking about a really interesting fight. When you put Sean Durfee on one side of the ring and John Johnson on the other, two guys, one in his 30s, one just hitting 40, both, you know, a 2-0 and o fighter versus a 1-0 and o fighter. These guys are novices, big guys, both undefeated. Of course, they've only had a couple of fights. But then you look behind them, and on one side you see Jay Jack, a longtime MMA veteran fighter, one heck of a reputation as a fighter, just a wild man out there. And you have the more calm, cool, and collected Mark Delagrati behind John Johnson on the other side. It's really an unbelievable clash of styles. It's, that is what's going to make this one heck of a fun night. You have the ground war on one side, stellar ground war. I think all of Jay Jack's wins himself were by submission, maybe save for one. And then uh, his student, same way. And then you're looking across at John Johnson, you know, 1 0 by stellar, stellar TKO. And behind him is a knockout artist in, in Mark Delagrati. And he's, he's created a lot of fighters that have proven that over the years in, 
in some heavy hitters. I think they they just laid the framework. You know, Jay Jack's been around forever. Um, you know, I think he's like fighting the Vale two day two do days. You know, um, you know those are tough guys. You know, he's been in the trenches. He's been scrappy. He can speak from experience to his uh, his fighters. So you know, you know Sean Duffy's getting you know that in his camp. He's getting the, you know that true gritty fight camp, and that's the same thing Mark brings to the table. You know, Mark's been in the trenches. He started over in Thailand. What? 15 years ago, you know, he was in Thailand learning the basics, coming over here, and you know, everybody thinks Mark's just a Thai coach. He's a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu. He did a lot of catch wrestling before he even got into Muay Thai. Um, you know, he knows how to run a fight camp. There's, there's a reason that a lot of the, the, you know, the successful UFC fighters, have, sorry, UFC fighters have come in here to train with Mark, um, you know, and, and run their fight camps out of here and, you know, sleep here in the gym and run fight camps. And, and John's taking that same strategy and philosophy. And I think that's good that you get these two, you know, I guess you can call them perennial powerhouses in the sport of you know modern day MMA that uh, laid the, the groundwork for New England MMA going against each other head to head. So it'll be interesting. J Jack, old longtime friend of mine, nothing but ultimate respect for somebody like J Jack. You know, I, I've discussed this with many people leading up to this fight. Uh, not only are we old friends, but uh, you know we we faced each other uh, back in the day in local events when the sport was in its incubative stages. We were trying to develop it. J Jack was one of the pioneers of the sport. Uh, him and his his wife uh, Amanda have done great things for the sport of mixed martial arts. Not only in the ring as combatants themselves, but they've promoted mixed martial arts for a long time. And somebody like Jay Jack and his wife who have been around for so long is a testament to good coaching, good ability, hard work, and dedication. And that's what I told John he's gonna have to face that night. Not only is he gonna have to face his opponent, Sean Durfee, but he's gonna have to face Jay Jack and his hard work ethics and everything that Jay Jack has put in from day one to develop the sport. I'm ready for the stand-up game. Mitts after mitts, bags after bags, fresh people sparring, a lot of, lot of stand-up games. He's athletic as hell, he's strong, he's determined, he's got nowhere to go but up, you know? I mean, if anybody's ever gonna fight him, now's the fucking time, because he ain't getting no worse than this, you know what I mean? Like, he's only gonna get better. It's gonna be difficult for anybody to beat John Johnson. There's one thing that John will not do, and that's quit. You can punch him in the face, you can grab his neck, you can twist it, you can choke him, you can do whatever, but until he taps, you don't win the fight. And John is very difficult, he is stubborn, and he will not tap to anybody. Until he hears me go, okay, you can quit, he's gonna keep going until he goes to sleep, or hears me say, it's time to stop. I'm guessing the camp he's from, he's gonna show up the same, and we're gonna see some fireworks. You know, Sean, I'm looking for an exciting fight. I hope you're training as hard as I am, I'm sure you are coming out of the academy, but I'm gonna tell you right now, when we step in the cage, the cage door closes, it's you and I. So come out in that cage and be ready because I'll be as ready as I possibly can be. Uh, John, September 23rd, man, I'm looking forward to a great fight. Can't wait to see how it all ends up. It's gonna be a good time. He's gonna go out and fight with everything he has in his heart and soul until somebody tells him it's time to stop. Derby is gonna show up prepared and willing to die.